On count one of involuntary manslaughter as to Madison Baldwin, we find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Jennifer Crumbly guilty on all four counts. Crumbly becomes the first parent in this country convicted in connection to a school shooting. Her son took four young innocent lives on November 30th, 2021 at Oxford High School. And now she may spend up to 15 years in prison for each count against her. The jury coming back with its decision after less than 15 hours. After reading the verdict, the jury forewoman said they took this very seriously, but there was one thing that solidified the guilty verdict. The thing that really hammered at home is that she was the last adult with the gun. She's talking about the gun that Jennifer Crumbly's son used in the mass shooting. Four students were killed. Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. Schilling's father says this verdict was a long time coming. There was a lot of emotion and back here and in the courtroom. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely going to resonate with me for a while. And, um, you know, I hope that I'll be able to calm down and, and get some, uh, you know, some sense of, of a good feeling, but it's not really a good feeling. Prosecutor Karen McDonald and Assistant Prosecutor Mark Keast hugging and shaking hands with some of the victim's parents. This verdict was very significant for Oxford families, but it also was closely watched by attorneys like Lewis Langham. This is a very unique case. I see other jurisdictions looking at if things were to happen in, in their states from this point forward. Langham is a professor at Cooley Law School. He calls this case historic. It began with jury selection on January 23rd and wrapped today with guilty verdicts. Throughout the course of the week and two days, the prosecution called 21 witnesses. The defense called only one, Jennifer Crumbly herself. She didn't have much of, an op much of a choice but to take the witness stand um, and try to explain um, her actions or inactions away. Um, but there was just so much evidence against her that uh, it was for not. Typically, once a verdict is delivered to the judge, the prosecution and defense can comment. However, in this case, they can't until after Jennifer's husband, James, gets his day in court. Prosecutor in this case, they pretty much are going to uh, put forth the same evidence in pretty much the same way. Um, and the areas where they thought they should have done something a little differently to tighten up their case a little bit, they will do that. So uh, James Crumley and his trial coming up next month, it's going to be a uh, tough road for him. James Crumbly faces the same involuntary manslaughter counts as his wife did. His trial begins on March 5th. As for Jennifer Crumbly, she'll find out how long she'll be behind bars when the judge sentences her on April 9th. How did we get to this guilty verdict for Jennifer Crumbly? We have to go back to 2021 when the prosecution alleges Jennifer Crumbly knew her son was having issues but didn't do anything about it. Let's go to March 2021. Text messages are exchanged where the shooter says there are demons in the house. Jennifer Crumbly does not answer her then 14-year-old son. In court, she testified she thought he was joking around. Flash forward to November 29, 2021. Jennifer Crumbly gets a call from a staff member at Oxford High School who says her son was in class looking up bullets on his phone. The staff member leaves a voicemail. That very next morning on November 30th, James and Jennifer Crumbly are called to Oxford High School. Their son was drawing what a teacher called disturbing pictures and words on a math assignment. The Crumbleys meet with the school counselor, Sean Hopkins, and the dean of students, Nick Ejack, for about 10 minutes. At which time the couple does not take their son home from school after it was suggested. Within less than two hours after that meeting, their son, who was 15 years old, shot and killed four students, Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. He also injured seven other people and traumatized countless staff and students. The last time the Crumbleys communicate with their son or see him was in the Oakland County substation after the shooting. Their son is then arraigned on charges in Oakland County on December 1st, 2021. His parents in a car on Zoom. 
On December 3rd, 2021, Oakland County Prosecutor Karen McDonald announces involuntary manslaughter charges against the shooter's parents, James and Jennifer Crumbly, ordering them to turn themselves in. That same day, they miss their 4 p.m. arraignment. U.S. Marshals then get involved in a manhunt. The couple was arrested the next day, found in a warehouse in Detroit, taken to the Oakland County Jail, where they pleaded not guilty, and each were held on a $500,000 bond. December 22nd, the attorneys for James and Jennifer Crumbly ask for their bond to be reduced to $100,000 and to allow the couple out on a GPS tether. Then, in 2022, in February, James and Jennifer Crumbly's preliminary examination in district court is held. The prosecution tries to prove the couple knew their son exhibited signs of needing help before the shooting. February 24th, the Oakland County judge says the couple will stand trial. On November 30th, 2022, it marks one year since the deadly mass shooting at Oxford High School. On March 7, 2023, the attorneys for James and Jennifer Crumbly argue in front of the Michigan Court of Appeals their case should be tossed out and charges should not be against them. Then March 23rd, a decision by the Michigan Court of Appeals says the case and charges will continue. On October 3rd of last year, the Michigan Supreme Court says they will not hear arguments in the case against James and Jennifer Crumley and they will stand trial. On December 8th, their son, the shooter, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. On January 23rd, 2024, more than two years after that deadly mass shooting, jury selection begins for Jennifer Crumbly. On February 2nd last week, the trial wraps up with closing arguments. Then today, February 6, 2024, the jury, after deliberating for less than 15 hours, came back and found Jennifer Crumbly guilty on all four involuntary manslaughter charges. We want to remember and honor the four lives lost in the shooting. Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. Family and friends honor these young lives taken far too soon. For Madison Baldwin, there's a memorial fund where you can buy a t-shirt or sweatshirt with a picture she drew for a friend on those apparel items. Tate Muir's family has set up a peer-to-peer -peer mentorship program. It's called 42 Strong in honor of the athlete who wore the number 42 on the football fields. And soon there will be a garden of reflection and honor for Hannah St. Juliana. And Justin Schilling's family is remembering his love for the outdoors. There's a nature fund set up to plant trees. We will post links on our website for you to donate.